I'm sorry. Every person out there is not going to keep their rabbit inside. This rabbit lives in a mansion, in my opinion, outside. I think the bottom line here, the point, is not, oh, it can die anywhere at any given time. The, the point is, what are you doing to decrease the chances of the bunny dying? Hey, Lennies and bunny lovers. Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to be reacting to your rabbit habitats, or as we like to call them, rabbitats. And I asked you guys to send me the worst of the worst of the worst. So I'm looking forward to reviewing these. And I'm thinking I might even add a little twist to this situation and call you guys if I can, if I'm able to reach you. I will call one of you and have a conversation with you and your parents about the habitats. I'm also going to include some good ones because I like to throw in some positivity. It doesn't always have to be negative. Also, just FYI guys, the people who submit their habitats to me, they do so willingly because they want the feedback. They are okay with being critiqued. So I am gonna try to be as diplomatic as possible with this. Please subscribe, smash like button, and hit the bell for unlimited bunny content. Let's hop right into this. The subject line in this email is very alarming. It is, my parents want to eat my bunny. So let's take a look. Hello, I'm Julia and I'm from Barcelona. I'm 15. I hope you read all of this because my bunny needs help. So this is where the bunny lives. Oh my God. Oh Lord. Yeah, that looks pretty bad. This is, it's bad. I, 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 gotta, I gotta rate this. I'm rating this an F. I'm rating this an F because it is pretty horrific. But hear me out. It's salvageable because I think what you have on your side here is the amount of space that your bunny has. And that's the thing. There's so much potential with the space that this bunny has. There's so much you could do with it. Now, I don't believe in keeping your bunnies outdoors. It's just not safe in my opinion, whether it's a backyard or a terrace, a balcony, whatever. It's still the outdoors. I know you said there aren't predators, but I just don't believe in no predators because there's always something out there that can sneak up on your bunny. So there's not, no kind of roofing. The other thing I want to bring up to you that is a big concern of mine is, is the hygiene and the sanitation being presented to me. It does not look clean. And you know, this is as simple as just sweeping on the daily. It just doesn't look like you pick up after your bunny. Your bunny also doesn't seem to be litter trained. There are pellets absolutely everywhere. I, I don't know if your bunny's spayed or neutered, but you really should get them fixed. You should provide them with a nice, generously large litter box. I see that you're good on the hay. You've got hay, but I don't see a lot of stimulation. I see like two like bouncy balls, but rabbits, they're not gonna like wanna play with that. You know what I mean? They need like stuff to chew on. And if I could fly over to you, I, I really would. Cause I just, there was so much that could be done with this space. I really encourage you, Julia, to just watch my videos on proper bunny care for beginners. Um, just to start with the basics and what you need to set up a, a proper living space. Okay, this is Miko and my Cami's habitat. Miko is a rescued male from a hoarding situation of over 200 rabbits. And Cami is a lionhead mix. Ooh, this is really beautiful. I absolutely love the golden hour, the beautiful sun just beaming through that window. You've got two beautiful looking litter boxes with a great hay feeder. I love the cloth hay feeder. I think those are really fun. I love the decor, the little bunny details. Great water jug there. I would say those are a lot of pellets. I know it's two bunnies, but I can't really tell how much you're feeding them. Just make sure you're not overdoing it on the pellets, okay? But I really, I would give this setup an A. Okay, my bunny is 10 weeks, so she's very small. This is her setup for now. 
We do let her free roam for a couple hours. Every day she has a home base that is open 24 seven. Uh, once she gets a little bigger, we will make her fully free roam on the whole top floor. Oh my God, this is stunning and beautiful. And I can't even believe you were trying to like justify this space as if it weren't enough because it's more than enough for this baby bunny. Even if you didn't graduate to free roaming, I would very much condone this space as it is. Although if you are gonna free roam, that's obviously even better. Uh, but this is just beautiful. I mean, this is like living the dream. I love the teepee in the litter box. I love the home base idea. I love the little foraging rug that you have. You've got a Heidi tunnel and you've got great flooring. Like your bunny is not gonna slip at all on this. I, I think you did an amazing job and this is an A plus all the way. Absolutely perfect. So this is my two-year-old bunny Kiko and his cage custom built by me and my dad. This is a pretty decent sized cage for a bunny. I don't agree with cages, but it almost mimics a playpen. So I would let that slide because it is quite big. It's tall. The real problem with this setup, in my opinion, it's extremely crowded. So there's virtually no space for the bunny to be running around, hopping around in here. It's like, you've got to remove some of the clutter in there. Your bunny, I love that you place an emphasis on toys and stimulation, but like, I think you overdid it. I'm gonna give this situation a B. Just remember that bunnies need to be able to run freely. And if there's just way too many obstacles in their way, they're not gonna be able to do that. And it is a little, it is overkill. Definitely remove at least half of those toys and your bunny would still be very content, I'm sure. And what you could do is just keep a few of the favorites in there and then just rotate the other ones in and out. The other thing that concerns me is there's like a very large and heavy looking glass aquarium sitting inside of this cage. And I'm sure it's sturdy and fine, um, but you just never know. It does make me a little uncomfortable that maybe this thing could like tip over or fall or something. I don't know where you live, but like if there was an earthquake in California, that would just like fall right on top of the bunny. Hi, I'm Yara from Saudi Arabia. Very far away. This is my setup for my two new bunnies. Oh my God, this is so, what? I swear, when you guys send me this stuff, I'm just like, what, like Lennon, what is Lennon doing with her life? This is so beautiful. I know you said you're gonna add the hay later on because those litter boxes do need hay, but oh my gosh, you've got like great flooring. Those little Heidi houses are so beautiful. I love the Ikea bed. I love the little rug, the little toys. And I love what you did with the NIC grids. Like you created this yourself and it really, looks so efficient, like you made it tall enough. I mean, this is an A plus, congratulations to you. Hi, I'm Alba, the owner of an Indu Lion Head Mix Bunny. And thanks to you, our lives have changed 360 degrees. I love this so very much. Oh my gosh, so you're basically, you've included a picture of when you first got your bunny and their bunny's living conditions in the beginning and what they live like now. This is like night and day. I mean, you've done an absolutely incredible job with this transformation. And I want this to serve as an example for everybody because Lennon started off that way too. And so it is, absolutely possible when there's a will there is a way you guys you have to remember a lot of these folks that send me submissions it's not like they're super mega rich living in mansions with money to blow you know they're just trying to make it work for their bunny and they you, when i see stories like this it makes it worth it for me to keep doing this it really does i love the ikea heidi house love the hooded litter box the ikea bed the rug the tunnels, it's just like, you killed it. So good for you, Alba, this is an A plus. Okay, this next one I have to do a voiceover for because I forgot to film it. 
but this person wrote, as you can see, my rabbit Smokely lives outside in a hutch. My biggest dream is to give him a much better life, but my parents don't want that. They think it's unhealthy because I also sleep in it. I'm assuming you mean your bed. We live in the Netherlands. You guys know my stance on outdoor rabbits as usual. I don't agree with it. There's just way too much at risk here. This X pen looks pretty short, so I can bet that your bunny could jump over that if they really wanted to. I see there's like a digging box with sand in it. I really don't recommend giving your bunnies access to sand just because they can inhale that, they can eat it, all sorts of things. It's not really healthy for them. I would replace that with soil. What I will say, you know, you, you've got the hay, you've got a litter box, but I don't really know why there's like wood shavings all up inside of this hutch. In my opinion, it's not necessary. I see you've got a little bit of enrichment and that's good. I would prefer more chew toys than these like plastic toys. I don't love this situation. I don't love that it's outdoors. I, I do appreciate that the bunny has space. I think if you just have the right conversation with your parents about this, if you show them some of our videos, you might be able to get them to change their minds. I would just tell them that this is really, really risky for the bun. It's just far too much could go wrong. You said you live in the Netherlands, and so I know it gets cold out there. It's gotta get absolutely freezing in the winter. So, you know, I would rate this, uh, mm, I would rate this a C plus because you know, you do have the litter box, the hay, some enrichment, but the rest of it is just far too risky. By the way, I did have to film this phone call separately in order to get a hold of these people. So if I look a little different, that is why. Hi, it's Lorelai. Um, I'm here with her. I'm her mom, Melissa. Nice to meet you. Hi, nice to meet you. Yeah, so, um... You know, she kind of sent me a picture of the bunny setup. She said she would love the bunny to live indoors. It seems like you guys maybe have a disagreement about that. So I kind of wanted to step in and see how I could help. Um, it's not really a disagreement. The bunny is definitely happier outside. She had her in her room. And it was, you know, its feces was everywhere. Um, it was chewing the carpet. It was in a dark room most of the day because she's at school and she's working now. So mm -hmm. it's definitely happy girl outside. It has interaction with people, our dogs. Oh, okay. So, so you guys have dogs. Yeah, we have three dogs. So the thing with the bunnies, you know, they, they're they really vulnerable outside. I'm like in disagreement. I'm going to listen to what you say, but most people... You know, I grew up in the country. Most people have their animals outside. Yeah, and I, I want to know where, where information from to back up your data. Yeah, so I'm just, you know, I don't, I'm not here to be, you know, argumentative or anything. And I totally get your standpoint that, you know, there's a culture where, you know, bunnies are raised outside. Typically, that culture has stemmed from breeding rabbits uh, for food and fur because in, in many places, they're still viewed as livestock. We're in the 21st century now. We've sort of, uh, bunnies have become beloved pets. We've de learned to develop strong bonds with them. They're very smart animals. Uh, you know, you can train them to use a litter box. You can train them to come to you when they're called. The problem with just keeping them outside is you're exposing them to all of the external variables that we don't have control over. Bunnies are so sensitive, they can die of a heart attack. Bunnies can die of a heat stroke in the middle of the summer, especially. And just because it hasn't happened yet doesn't mean it, it won't happen in the future. In terms of like the mental health of the bunny, that to me is probably more important than anything else because the bunny is isolated. Isolated in the bedroom, locked up all day in the dark. It's it has so much more attention outside. I don't agree with that statement, but I'm still listening to everything else you're saying. Okay, well, let's just say the bunny is isolated inside. Isolated inside or outside. But then outside, you've got all the external variables that we don't have control over. There's locks and it is protected. I'm, I don't, there's 
nothing getting the rabbit outside. Okay, it's like I said, it's not just the ability for a predator to, you know, get a hold of the bunny. The bunny can die of a heart attack even just if a predator shows up and crawls through that yeah, pen. Right. I'm happy to email you guys all sorts of resources. I mean, if I just tell you verbally. I, yes, I'm a nurse in research. Like, I have to have facts in front of me verifying where this comes from. Because it's not just a case. So, I'm happy to email you guys a bunch of resources, articles, etc. And a lot of it is also anecdotes from people. I mean, if your buddy hasn't died of a heart attack, it doesn't mean it can't die of a heart attack. Do you know what I mean? It's the same thing with... It can die of a heart attack inside. That's like human beings. We can die anywhere, inside, outside, from a heart attack or anything. Like, that just makes no sense to me. I'm sorry, but every person out there is not going to keep their rabbit inside. This rabbit lives in a mansion, in my opinion, outside. It has a need. I think the bottom line here, the point is not, oh, it can die anywhere at any given time. You could apply that to everybody. Yes. The, the point is, what are you doing to decrease the chances of the bunny dying? That is the bottom line. That rabbit is so happy outside. The rabbit is like not depressed like it was inside. I'm not gonna agree with you on any of that of, as far as it should be inside versus outside. Like I said, you know, you're very stern in your beliefs. You're not gonna change. And my the only reason I'm on the phone is to just give pointers and try to find a happy medium. But if you're not if you're not like open to any kind of change, I mean I don't I don't think there's much I can do here. Now, Nevaeh has her own perspective, like the rabbit should be inside because she's following all these videos on TikTok and being influenced by people. But I wanna know like hard evidence. Well, there's evidence even with veterinarians you can ask your local veterinarian you can google any of this as well it's not just tiktok there's there are plenty of articles and research that are not me just so you know that dick that dictate the the lifespan of a rabbit that lives indoors versus the lifespan of a rabbit that lives outdoors is vastly different a rabbit that lives indoors, they typically can live up to 14, 15 years if they're well taken care of. They have all, you know, they're, they're eating a healthy diet, getting exercise, etc. Versus a rabbit that lives outdoors where their chances of external sources influencing that lifespan is much, much greater. If it's not just TikTok, it's not just YouTube. If people are saying it, it's for a reason. I know you said, well, it's isolated inside, but the truth is when you're sharing a space with your bunny, they're actually, they're getting to know you better. You're getting to know them better. They become less afraid of you. The bond strengthens. They yeah. they wait for you to come home and they look forward to it and they want to cuddle up with you on the couch and watch a movie with you. I mean, it's really, really beautiful. And you're not getting that kind of quality time when you keep them outside. All I can ask is that you look into it at least. Definitely. I, I will. I appreciate the information. So what do you do for a living? Do you work with rabbits? Yeah, I do. Okay. I've like what your credentials were. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you so much. That's, I really appreciate the information you provided us. Yeah, no worries. And are you there, Nevea? Yes, I am. So I just want you to show your mom what you think our most valuable videos are. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Bye. All right, guys. So that's it for this video. I hope you liked it. Please smash like button, subscribe, hit the bell. You guys know the drill. Comment down below which one of these was your favorite and let me know what you thought about that phone call that I had with that mother. Okay, that was really interesting. Um, also, I hope you guys know, like I did have consent to record that phone call and that family is remaining anonymous. 
Um, but I want that phone call to serve as another example of, you know, resistance within the household in terms of the bunny's living conditions. I know a lot of you struggle with this. I know a lot of parents just don't get it. The way to their hearts is through educating and just feeding them the right information and showing them some of our videos, showing them how beautiful it can really be to cohabitate with your bunny, share a space with them. All right, guys, thanks for checking us out and we'll see you soon. Bye.